Hi folks, um, I've just sat here for about half an hour recording myself making this sheath and telling you all sorts of fantastic things and uh, when I was done I uh, went to view the video and it had um, become unplayable for some reason. Maybe it would have worked on the computer. Anyway, so this is going to be a condensed version. As you can see I've got the material cut out and trimmed and everything um, but I'll tell you all of the steps anyway. And hopefully you can see this well enough and hear it well enough. This is the body of the sheath and length and width wise, measurement wise, I like the body to be quite high up on the handle. A lot of people make their sheath just long enough to cover the blade, which is perfectly fine. That does exactly what you want a sheath to do, protects you from the blade and the blade um, and uh, from the blade from you. Um, but I think it looks a little bit nicer. If you can find the material, obviously, if you can't, then the blade covering is perfect. And uh, what I'm about to tell you can be used for that as well. It's, it's as simple as that. In fact, the blade coverings are much, much easier and much faster. But I like them to come up a little bit further on the handle. Uh, I think it looks nicer. Um, and I think it holds better, especially in a, a rough tool bag like I have. My tool bag gets the, the most vicious beating. So I like to make these sheaths a little bit bigger to deal with being beaten up. Um, lengthwise, you don't want the tip of the knife to touch the bottom of the, sh of the sheath necessarily because um, it will pierce it and uh, you want to avoid that. So lengthwise, roughly half a centimeter perhaps shy of the, uh, of the bottom is what you're aiming for with enough of the handle proud of the mouth of the sheath that you can easily grab it and just put it out. It doesn't need to be a chore. Uh, so that's as simple as that. And uh, as I say, this is four to five times, I didn't say that this time, I said that last time, four to five times the length of what you're looking for is, is uh, of the length of the knife is what you need. And then you fold it in four like that. And that gives you the body of the sheath. Now, four layers of one mil, 1.4, three, four mil birch bark is very, very durable. And uh, that'll last for a very long time, probably outlast all of us if it's treated right, like with most things. So, and then you have the body and then you have your weaving threads, weaving wraps, whatever you want to call them. Um, I like these to be about a centimeter wide, a centimeter tall, whatever. And if this if the, whack, uh, the, the weaving material is a slightly thinner variety of bark than the body, then all the better, because you want these to make tight creases and folds around the sheath. And um, thicker birch bark can be difficult to fold, and uh, it will argue with you a bit when you try and crease it. But if you soak your bark in warm water for five to ten minutes before you start, um, that can help with, uh, with bending and setting, a little bit like vegetable tanned leather. Um, but yeah, that's that's the basic of it. Uh, and if you can't get birch bark, then cherry and elm uh, are also good alternatives. There are some apparently some uh, American hardwoods that have decent bark, um, but I have no experience with those. I'm sure people will enlighten us. Um, so I'm just going to start wrapping and show you how I do it. You want your bark, all the bark that you use, you want it to be as clean of scars and knot holes as possible. And as, as solid and even as you can manage, um, just for strength and longevity. If you can't get super clean, super knot free, hole free bark, then that's fine. You can make that work um, if you're careful and it doesn't break when you're, when you're weaving it. Because nothing in the sheath, it has no moving parts. Um, none of this stuff is going to be moving once you're finished with it. So technically speaking, it should last quite a while, even if there are some holes. But uh, just to show you the beginning of the weave, take your the end of your weaving material. And you can see there are four layers here. Wrap the, or poke the end into, up to about here on the inside of the first layer. You want it to be at a bit of an angle but not too steep an angle. Too steep an angle, obviously, then you get less wrapping, which makes less of a tight hold. And very, very um, acute angle would be, you'd need a lot of wrapping material. It could that'd look good, but it takes more time and more material, and it's not really necessary for a good fit and a good hold. So um, I haven't measured this with a protractor, but um, 
I don't know, maybe 45 degrees, something like that. It doesn't need to be perfect or exact. But uh, you don't want the end of this sticking out the other side. You want it to be firmly within the realms of the birch bark at an angle like so. And then pinch the bottom here when you do this first weave because it can come undone if you're not careful. And so get your strip in there. Just where you want it to be. Pinch it. Mm. And then wrap this round over. Now again, keeping everything pinched and tight. And once you get back to here, this is where we start going under between the other two layers on the other side. This is for strength and for aesthetic purposes, form and function. It looks nice and it holds better. The more bark being pinched between layers of other bark, the better the hold and the less you will think that you will need glue or similar. Go under again. You want the wrapping to be very tight at the bottom to hold the blade. Um, but as we get towards the top, we'll start to loosen the bark just minutely. minutely. Just so that it can accept the handle. If you're just making a blade cover, then you want it to be really tight the whole way around. Um, and we go over, making sure to pinch everything, keep it nice and tight. And then we go under again. We've gotten we've gotten to the over section, so we go under. Keep things nice and tight. If your bark is of su sufficient thickness, then you can be a little bit rough with it. It will survive. It's, it's a very durable material. And it has a natural tackiness to it. That it's uh, quite a lot of friction when things are drawn across the surface of it, which is why we're using it for this specific purpose. Now, here, as you can see, the, um, the wrapping is too short. It would, of course, be preferable if you had a piece, a single piece, that could um, wrap the entire thing. But uh, if you've ever made any cordage out of anything, then you, you may be familiar with having threads that are too short. And the simple remedy for that is to get another thread of roughly the same dimensions and slot it in over slightly behind the last wrap. And then you just make it nice and tight get it all lined up on the side and then keep going. And natural tackiness, as I say, will help keep the bark in place. There's no need for glue or for tying or anything like that. Go under. Keep everything nice and tight. Pull to get it creased and tight. Under again. And you can adapt this for any knife, almost, depending on the shape. Over, keep it nice and tight. Over again. We've gotten back to our overweave, so we go under. I hope I'm holding this to the camera. Under again. Keep it nice and tight. It's very easy when focusing on the next weave to allow the previous one to become loose. So keep an eye on that. Tighten things up as you go. Now this is uh, this is too short, so we need to get our third piece. And then same as before. Place it in above and on top, slightly behind the previous wrap. Keep it nice and tight. I'm going over still. And now We've gotten towards the top of the sheath, and this is a good time to put your knife in just to see what the fit is like. Oh, that's better than the first one I did. That's good. Okay, when I get to this point, normally I, I forego the attractiveness of the alternating weave and just try to slot the wrapping in in a practical manner, because this is the shape that we want. This is the thickness that we want all around, and, and we want to keep it like this for as long as possible. So leave your knife in at this point and just focus on trying to get the bark to stay in this shape by uh, just I tend to just go under a lot here just keep going under like a collar really 
Fernando, Fernando, Fernando. Which of you haven't got any wrap left? Looks like the last one. That's the last one. There we go. So, uh, the final thing, uh, these, these notches at the top here, which I've done on my, my other sheets here, these are so that the folded thick bark at the top here uh, has a little bit more maneuverability and will fold somewhat around the shape of your sheath. I don't really like having these very, very sharp corners. Um, so I just two cuts on either side should be enough to... Uh, give it that tightness. It also makes it look a little bit nicer, I think. But that's that's pretty much it. You can see where the blade is coming to. Uh, maybe you can see in there, just as far down as possible without actually touching the bottom of the sheath is what we want. It's golden. And yeah, uh, no glue or uh, anything like that. Um, the, the friction from the bark on, on, on touching itself will just keep it in place pretty much forever. Uh, you may notice that your sheath will shrink a little bit if it's very, very fresh bark. Um, it'll shrink a little bit and then stop shrinking. And um, it'll be good for many, many years if it's treated well. Um, yeah, that is my process.